This is ridiculous, Hillary. I I just absolutely think this is not true. There's this issue that I'm going to be heard as championing the naive view that all reliable notion, uh, all reliable knowledge is scientific, but I'm hoping to, to convince you that what's about to come, and it is not yet fully here, is going to be a reassertion of the so-called realism in science. What we are actually looking at at the moment is many different crises that have been conflated. The repro- uh, reproducibility crisis, the issue of political economy with grants uh, and peer review in science, the issue with a better understanding of the ways in which our brains misperceive reality and our umwelt. And all of these different kinds of critiques have been conflated in this post-realism approach that we're hearing about from Hillary Hoffman and others. And what we're, if we're going to have this conversation, we should do it uh, by talking over each other, bringing passion, but also being very careful to deconflate all of the different critiques of scientific knowledge. If you try and get rid of uh, metaphysics in the sense of things that are not grounded on observation, it turns out you can't really do it. And I would argue the reason that you can't really do it is because observation itself builds in the idea that we can reach through to reality, that we can just see how it is, and that will, that will tell us where we are. But I, I don't think we can reach through to, uh, to how it is in that way, both with our senses and with our theories and with our language. In the case of science, you can see that there are elements of the framework of science which we can't find any observation for. I mean, science has a story, there are laws, and they apply to things. Well, we can't find the laws, can we, in the sense if you can't get a telescope and, oh, there's the law. You, you can't find the law. And you can't find the things either, it turns out, because as, as, as you look at the things, they, they keep on disappearing on you. Well, this is so ridiculous, you're... Hillary. Okay. I, I just okay. absolutely right. think this is not true. This sort of set of new age beliefs flatter us. In 1913, we found the last major landmass on Earth, which w- turned out to be um, Severnia Zemlya, uh, north of Siberia. And it was mapped by 1932. That's 90 years in our past. Nobody is searching for land ma- major landmasses on Earth. Why? Because that game is over. It closed, right? Um, so in a sense, what, what's going on is we have a belief that, the, that there are an infinite number of problems all the way down. Now, do I agree with you that there will always be problems that we can't solve? We always know that there will be Diophantine equations for number theorists to work on. We've proven that. We've proven that there are things that are true that are not true for any good reason, so Gödel will not allow us to reach them from inside of an axiomatic system. But the idea that the rules of chess can never be known right? Which is really what a theory of everything is. It's just a search for rules where at some point the scientists put down their pen and the philosophers are the only one interested because of this mythical equation, which really should be a Lagrangian, not an equation. Um, that, That sense, it flatters our current sense of ourselves, but it's obviously not true. We're not looking for an extension of the genetic code. We're sort of curious that maybe something doesn't follow 64 codons and 20 amino acids. You know, and there's some stuff around the edges. But in fact, there are things that close. There are things that extend infinitely. And we need the wisdom to know the difference. Eric, you mentioned, you know, well, there are things that close. I think that nothing ever closes, as it were, that you can never quite get to the bottom uh, of anything. But that doesn't mean to say that you can have a damn good go and and you refine it as as it works. And uh, And indeed, I think, Science has always worked like that. So, so when, when Newton first said, you know, the apple falls to the ground because of gravity, the, the people, uh, critics of him said, well, wait a minute, you know, when we point to situations which it doesn't fit, like most of the time, the apple doesn't fall to the ground, you say there's an equal and opposite force in the tree holding it there. But, but any example, we counter example, you just say, well, there's another force acting. So we can't counter your theory because whatever you do, you'll just say there's another force. And that is how science works. It creates, you know, something doesn't work. You say, oh, well, this must be going on. So you then add something else and you endlessly refine. You have the illusion that you're getting to reality. Uh, Rather, instead, what you're doing is refining your model to one that works better. We've lost this idea that sometimes we pull off some genius level stuff. And as much as I love Hawking and Heisenberg, they're, they're no Dirac and Einstein. We have these exceptional moments where things really go pretty wild. And if I think about, you know, we never get to the bottom. Nobody is looking for a new norm division algebra between the beyond the reals complex quaternions and the octonions. That's stable. It's never going to change. 
uh, unless something you know is, is is true about logic that I don't know. I think the frame that you have for things is always up for grabs, but it's true within that frame. You have things that just don't make much sense, uh, and which we would say are which we would say are wrong. You know, to say one side has won in a football game when uh, wh when the score was different is uh, is usually just thought of as wrong. Actually, if you get down to the detail, I would even challenge that because I think because I think that what happens is the 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 the, the supporter who goes along uh, who you know the score is meant to be two one. They say, oh, we were robbed. We run really. So there's always a way of, of, of re, reframing it to say there's a different outcome. And what I'm here to tell you is that I believe that a short time from now, you can have a situation in which the thing closes just like land masses on Earth. And think about how silly it sounds when you have Gilligan's Island going in your head, the, 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 crew, the ships on ground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle. With Google Earth, nobody's thinking about uncharted desert isles. You have to give the idea that certain things close its due or this whole thing leads to madness. The, the dominant story in physics for the last 30 years or so has been string theory. And Eric has been a fantastically valuable critic yeah. of that idea. The bit that I would then take issue with him is the notion that y you might arrive. Of course, there'll be someone who will come along after you will, who will say, oh, actually, Eric's theory is, is, is also mistaken. It's like this. And you accepted that idea that there'd be another theories, but you want to hold on to the idea that some, at some point we'll get to the end of that uh, process. Uh, that you know, there might be a whole series of you know, Kuhnian paradigm shifts, but eventually we might arrive. And I'm saying, uh, I, I don't think so. Okay, there's two separate things. There's a question about my physics theory and my theory in general about this issue. I don't know that it do, it's not an infinite series of closure problems all the way down. Yeah. I am saying that it may close and that you seem to be indicating that it, that is effectively impossible because there's always a larger system in which that thing may not be true. And I would say that the real time that we, we, we hit the rock bottom is when the scientists say, I don't see anything more for me to do and the philosophers and the theologians take over. Right, and that there are these moments, or the fiction writers. There's still well, people writing about, you know, beneath the surface of the earth, even if scientists aren't thinking. Uh, but ways. scientists have always imagined that they've almost got there. Lord Kelvin said, you know, 1890, uh, we've cracked it. We've only got a little technical details. So that was before Einstein, before quantum mechanics, and and, and uh, Hawking thought we'd almost got it, didn't he? We, we were just. Around. It's it's a fantasy. No, no, no. It, it's those not, are, it's those not are several like data that. points that we all know. And because to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below, or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.